Do you always run out of memory when your Arduino sketch has several libraries? This is the Atmega 4808-AU surface mount microcontroller with a massive 48 kilobytes of onboard flash memory. It has the same physical 32-pin layout as the Atmega 328, which is used in the Arduino Nano, but this one has more memory, an internal oscillator, and three separate serial UART ports. In previous videos, I've uploaded sketches using the SPI interface. However, similar to many new AVR controllers, this one can only be programmed by UPDI. Today I'll load a simple sketch into this breadboard circuit using an Arduino Nano as my UPDI programmer. First I'll insert the chip into this 32-pin test adapter, careful to position the chip with a circle at pin 1. This adapter simply connects pins 1 through 16 to the left side of my breadboard and pin 17 through 32 to the right side of my breadboard. To upload the sketch to the microcontroller, I have a spare Arduino Nano which I will convert to a UPDI programmer. To convert it, I just need to upload a sketch called JTAG to UPDI, which I'll download from the internet. I also just need to add a 10 microfarad capacitor and a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor. Let's plug the Arduino into my laptop USB cable. Now we'll search for JTAG to UPDI. As it describes, it can be used for mega AVR microcontrollers like this one. Now just download the zip file, open, and extract the file contents. We really only need the source folder from this repository. So I'll copy it to my desktop. Now Arduino IDE parent folders are often named the same as the main sketch file. So I'll rename this to JTAG to UPDI. And I'll enter the folder and double click on the JTAG to UPDI.ino file to open it in the Arduino IDE. You'll see that the main file is actually empty, but don't worry. All of the other files have the important code necessary to run the programmer. Now let's switch to an Arduino Nano. And check that I've got the right port number just for good measure. Now I'll upload, and I'll expand the console so we can see what's happening during the upload. Oops, that didn't work. It says that the programmer is not responding. That's because you can't upload to an Arduino with the reset capacitor in place. I'll remove the capacitor temporarily to upload my sketch. Upload. And it's working now. And it's successful. Let's put the capacitor back, making sure to orient the ground side, which is indicated by the white strip on the side of the capacitor, to ground. Now simple blink sketches are boring, so in this circuit we're going to have both a blinking LED and a small OLED display 
using the CHIPS I2C C bus. You'll notice that there are no external oscillator because we can just use the internal one. All we need is a couple 100 nanofarad tantalum capacitors across ground and VCC and the AVCC pins. And in the sketch I'll drive the LED from pin 24 which is conveniently mapped as GPIO 24. Just to show you that the 4808 can be programmed in system, I'll power up the breadboard separately with this breadboard power supply. Now let's write a simple sketch program adding a counting number on the LCD and blink the LED. Here's 20 lines of code doing just that. We initiate the display and set GPIO 24 as an output. Then our display just prints the value of I, increments it, and turns the LED on and off continuously. We don't see the Atmega 4808 in Board Manager, and that's because we haven't added it yet. It's also not available in the Board Manager library. We're looking for Megacore X. Instead, we'll just have to search the internet for Megacore X. and we'll find a repository by MCU Dude. You can see it's for the Atmega 4808. Now we don't need to download this repository. We just need to find the URL link for this core. So I'll copy that And in Arduino Preferences, we'll paste the URL into the Additional Board Managers field. And I always check that the Upload Verbose output is checked so that we can see what's happening during the upload. Now when we go to Tools and Board Manager and type Megacore X, it appears. Now install it. It was already installed on my PC. Here the Atmega boards appear, and there's the 4808. We'll leave all the settings as is, internal clock, brownout detection, the 32 pin layout, and no bootloader. The nice thing about this chip is that we don't have to worry about burning a bootloader. Finally, make sure to choose JTAG to UPDI as the programmer. Before we upload, we just need to make the UPDI connections. The UPDI pin on the Atmega 4D808 is on pin 27. And we'll connect it to pin D6 on the nano through a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor. Although the UPDI is sometimes referred to as a single pin programming, we also need to connect the grounds together as a reference. Now let's plug in the programmer USB connection and we'll power up the breadboard. Now after double checking all of the settings, we'll upload using Programmer and we'll save the sketch because we hadn't already. Now the sketch is compiling and uploading. And perfect, the upload is complete, 
and our LCD counter is incrementing by three and our LED is blinking. That was really quite easy with only 20 lines of code and a few components. Now programming a powered up breadboard is one way to do it, but let's try powering the board from the programmer during the upload. To do that, we'll remove the breadboard power supply and also de-energize the Nano because it's very easy to fry components by touching the wrong wires together. Now I'll add a third connection from the 5 volt output of the Nano to the power rail on the breadboard. And we'll hook back up the programmer. And we'll modify the sketch slightly to count increments of 1 instead of 3. And we'll upload using programmer. And same as before, success. Let's disconnect the programmer now and try powering up the circuit all by itself. We'll insert the breadboard power supply and power it up. And voila! Now we have a standalone circuit driven only by the Atmega 4808 microcontroller. I'll be sure to add this circuit schematic in the video description. So that was all thanks to this makeshift UPDI programmer using a spare Arduino Nano and a couple extra components. I also ordered a micro UPDI programmer from Tindy.com for $13 but I didn't realize that it needs to piggyback on a Pro Micro development board, and I just didn't have one of those. I'll put this one away and I might test it out in the future. So there you have it. I hope that you can see it's pretty straightforward to program up a small, powerful microcontroller. But what good is that skill? The obvious next step is to miniaturize your circuits onto a printed circuit board like this one. There is endless possibilities when you can order real-life circuit boards with your designs on them. So I hope this was useful. I hope you got something out of it, and I'll see you next time.